Do you wanna play like this? If so, the first step is to master all the Fortnite settings. I've played this game for over five years now, and today I will teach and explain you all the best settings you must use. I highly recommend everyone to watch this entire video through, because I'll be giving out some secret tips that you might have never heard of. Okay, so starting from the game tab, the first setting is toggle sprint. You should keep this off, because it gives you more control over what you're doing in the game. This way, if you wanna sprint in the game, you gotta hold down your sprint button, and that's what we want. Next up, we have auto open doors, and you should definitely keep this on. Sometimes you're gonna mess up an edit, and you're gonna edit a door now accident. If you have this setting on, it doesn't really matter since you're going to be opening that door anyway. Then if you have mantle activation, definitely set this to hold jump because if you have it on hold forward, you're going to be mantling all over the place without even meaning to do it. By the way, guys, if I skip a setting, that means that you don't have to worry about it. Just leave it as it is. For an example, these three here, they don't really matter. So I'm just going to skip them. Okay, this next one is a super important one. We got preferred item slots. The way I have my loadout set up is the most ideal in Fortnite. This allows you to navigate through your inventory very easily and the fastest. But the most important one is to have your shotgun as your first item in the loadout. Next we have building settings and these are really important. Keep your reset building choice on, disable your pre-edit option, turbo building definitely on, and then we have auto confirm edits. Now they used to call this confirm edit on release and honestly this comes down to your personal preference. I've played without it and with it and I must actually admit that I feel like I was a little bit faster when I was not using this setting. But then again I'm a little more consistent now with it and honestly in today's Fortnite it's more important for you to be more consistent than fast. So I do recommend keeping this setting on. This means when you're editing or resetting your edits, you don't have to press a separate bind to do an edit or reset an edit. As soon as you just let go of your select edit button or reset edit button, it does the edit for you. And this is super good because you don't have to be pressing as many buttons. If you don't like this setting though, what you have to set this setting on is the reset option. This gives you scroll wheel reset even on controller. Just try it and see how much faster your resets are. But like I said, I do recommend keeping it on both. Then you have your replays. Make sure your replays are set off because that can reduce your FPS a lot and give you more input delay. Next we have your HUD settings. Now these don't matter too much but you really have to put down your HUD scale to at least 65% or even lower. Normally the HUD scale is set to 100 and as you guys can see from the screen right now it looks super big and when you get into a fight it can be on the way if you have it on 100. I'm not going to get into the other HUD settings because they don't really matter that much but if you want to copy mine here you go. These are really good. Next up we have touch and motion. You definitely want to keep this off. You don't want to touch this whatsoever. Next up, we have controller options, and these are the most important. Controller auto run, I've always kept this off. Next, we have build immediately, builder pro. What it means is when you place a build, instead of having to click the button twice, you can just press it once and it'll build for you. And this makes you a way faster builder, so keep this on. Next, we have edit hold time. This doesn't really matter, but keep it at zero. Slide hold time, I keep this on the default, and I found this the best. If you have it too low like this, you'll be sliding without even meaning to slide. Reset camera axis don't matter, you can just keep it on pitch. And reset camera time, keep it on 0.100. Now, this is where a lot of people make a mistake. They play with vibration on but you definitely want to keep it off because having vibration on can lead to your hands shaking more in game and sweating and you don't want neither of those so keep it off next we have the new quick weapon beta mode this setting basically allows you to navigate through your inventory faster but since it's in beta mode it really is not faster they still have to fix a lot of things in it so as of right now we don't want to keep this setting on so set this setting to custom only the delay to zero and toggle behavior none next we have your edit and build sensitivities the sensitivity that's a little higher than the middle class is what i've found the absolute best in Fortnite. Here are my sensitivities. I play on 2x build and edit mode sense and 54% horizontal and vertical speed. Now when you first try this out, they might feel a little fast. Once you get used to this, you're going to be editing, building, and aiming like a f***ing god, bro. Next we have returning horizontal boost. Keep this off. Having these boosts on makes you a really inconsistent player. It basically means when you put your joystick all the way to some direction, it activates this boost and it makes your sensitivity even faster. That has always sounded weird to me, so I've always kept this off. Set your turning boost ramp time to zero and your instant boost when building off. Next up, you have your ADS look horizontal speed. This is your sensitivity when you're aiming down. You want to set this to low, but not too low. If you're going to be playing on my sensitivity, then use 8% because this is the best one I've ever found. Next, we have look dampening time. Set this to zero. This setting doesn't really do anything in the game, so you want to keep it off. Look input curve. Now, this is a big question in the Fortnite community. Which one is better, linear or exponential? Well, let me tell you guys, if you want to be a fast, flashy mechanical player use linear linear input curve basically means that when you touch your joystick it instantly registers the movement now exponential look input curve instead of having that smooth instant movement it's gonna make your sensitivity go from slow to fast slowly and for some players this is a really good thing because this makes controlling your joystick a little easier so if you're someone who doesn't really want to be the fastest most mechanical player and you want to focus on having a really good aim then i recommend you guys to keep exponential on personally i've been on linear for years and i'm never switching from it now we're coming down to dead 
zones. Now, what dead zones are, they are the zones that are dead in your joysticks. So as you guys can see from the gray ball on the screen, when I'm moving my right stick a little, you can see that yellow ball activate. And you definitely want to have your dead zone set to as low as possible. This makes your game feel a lot more responsive and faster. But if you have your dead zones too low, like 5% a lot of the times, your character is going to be moving by itself and you don't want that. So make sure you hire this up until you find the lowest dead zone where your character doesn't move by itself. And that's what you want to be playing on. So for me, that is 7%. Next, you have your foot controller. If you don't know what a foot controller is, here I have a picture for you. I'm guessing basically none of you guys have this. So make sure you set this to off. Next, we have your audio settings and you definitely want to have this all the way high. The game sounds in Fortnite are really bad. So two of the most important sound settings are the main and the sound effects. Keep those at 100%. Next up, you have your controller binds. And the most important thing here is to have your binds set to something where you don't have to take your thumbs off the joystick when you're jumping, building, or editing. So these here are the best possible non-claw binds that I was using back in my day when I was playing no-claw. And I'll be showing my own settings after this. So here are the non-claw combat controls. Also, I forgot to show this in the video, but make sure your pickaxe is set to your triangle or Y. Here we have the build controls, edit controls. Now, when it comes to your edit controls, there's a couple things you need to do. Make sure your confirm edit bind is different from your actual edit bind. So let's say you edit with your touchpad. You want to make sure your confirm edit is not on touchpad. Personally, I have it on L2, and that means that I play on double binds. My edit button and my confirm edit binds are separate, and that gives you the absolute fastest edits. So make sure you set your binds like that. And also, one super big tip I can give is make sure you have your reset, select, and confirm binds on your bumpers and triggers. These are really easy to access whether you play claw paddles or non-claw, since your hands are always going to be resting here on these buttons. So if you play non-claw, I highly recommend you guys to keep these settings. Now, if you play claw or you have paddles, you're going to be having way more freedom when it comes to your binds. If you're still looking for the best binds, I recommend you guys switching to mine. So here we have the combat controls, build controls, edit controls, and ability controls. Next, we have your account and privacy, and you want to come here and change a couple things because they can give you input delay. First up, we have player surveys. Keep that off. Filter mature language. Keep that off. Text chat off. And then your hidden matchmaking delay set to zero. If you found this video helpful, please don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. This video took me a lot of time to make, so that would be really much appreciated. See you in the next video. Bye.